Hello, and welcome to Tomorrow's Past, our ongoing exploration of yesterday's predictions of the future. Very excited about today, we are going to be looking at the intersection of propaganda and retrofuturism, Soviet futurism. This is not to be confused with Russian futurism, the art movement that preceded the Soviet Revolution. Instead, we are going to be focusing on how artists within the Soviet Union imagine tomorrow. If you're interested, we have an entire video on Soviet propaganda and how the rise of the USSR was aided by film. You can check that out for more context. However, it is impossible to talk about Soviet futurism without mentioning interplanetary revolution. Now this cartoon more or less outlines the Soviet's philosophy for space travel to spread peace through communism across the universe. It was produced in 1924 and predicted that in just a few short years, the Soviets would not only rid this planet of capitalists, but would reach space and actively engage with other species, in turn converting them to communism. This was meant to be a parody of another film produced in 1924, Alita, based on the novel by Alexei Tolstoy, <laughs> not that Tolstoy. Though it is absolutely futuristic, it's hard to classify this as an explicit prediction of the future. We run into this problem a lot, deciding when something is retrofuturism or simply science fiction. Uh, they are similar, but not necessarily the same. That distinction is going to be less important this time, as what I really want to do is talk about Technica Molodizi. Translated Technology for the Youth, Technica Molodizi is a science magazine that began in 1933 and continues to be published today. While it features news on technological advances as well as a sci-fi section, it also speculates on what the future may hold. Now, I do not speak Russian, so I can't tell if these illustrations are predictions or just companion pieces to the fiction featured, uh, but we will be basing this on the illustrations and treating them like they were predictions. Uh, for the most part, the designs are in line with what we've seen before. I think the fact that so much of this is familiar is a testament to just how alike people are, regardless of nationality. Everybody wants flying cars, we all want to colonize space. Uh, personally, I wish we could go back to when we all agreed that the monorail would transport us into the future. The main difference here, though, as far as I can tell, is that these predictions would in one way or another serve the Soviet people and the cause of communism. This could be me imparting what I know about the Soviet Union, but this magazine is extremely nationalistic. Much of the art is rooted in Soviet, or later socialist realism, you know, the worker, strength, optimism, which obviously lends itself to the future, a brighter tomorrow. It's interesting, looking at what was being published during wartime, uh, that would be World War II. Every prediction is seen through a militaristic lens, we get new weapons or defensive strategies, and a lot of the magazine is dedicated to propaganda. This would continue after their victory. As we move forward in time, we see new ways of thinking about farming, including pesticide use, and a vacuum that sucks fish out of the sea. We also see more level-headed approaches to space travel, which makes sense, seeing as how the Soviet space program really took off in the 1950s. Uh, of course, it was easier to make these predictions with the new information that was available to them. We get a huge jump in design and aesthetics as we enter the 1960s. I absolutely love these. Uh, they are visually striking, particularly the ones from the 70s. Uh, like they had in the 50s, they worked off of what advancements were happening, especially the understanding of space. We see much more realistic, <laughs> what would become realistic uh, depictions of uh, space shuttles or space stations. In terms of the art styles being used, um, this was a period where Western influence was slowly seeping in, far out, <laughs> sometimes what I would describe as far out designs. The Cold War heated up again in the 1980s, and it is reflected here by the re-emergence of military technology. Uh, throughout the 80s, we also get a lot of predictions involving computers and robots, which again, makes sense, reflecting the changes in technology. Uh, now, the Soviet Union collapsed in late 1991, and given that these predictions are coupled with actual scientific breakthroughs, let's see how they stack up against the actual achievements of the Soviet Union, uh, specifically their space program. Well, the Soviets can lay claim to many firsts in terms of space exploration. They would launch the first satellite, Sputnik 1, into Earth's orbit in 1957. A few weeks later, Laika, a stray dog from the streets of Moscow, became the first animal to orbit Earth. The Soviet Union was also responsible for sending the first man and woman into space, Yuri Gagarin and Valentina Tereshkova, in 1961 and 63, respectively. These achievements would be immortalized in Soviet culture, and images of the cosmonauts often appeared on propaganda. However, no nation controls information better than Russia, and while the triumphs were celebrated, their failures were kept secret. This would preserve the integrity and supremacy of communism, as admitting failure in the space race was not an option. As an example, the Nadellan disaster in 1960. This saw a rocket explode during testing, killing 78 crew members, including the commanding officer of the Soviet Union Strategic Rocket Forces, Mitrofan Ivanovich Nadellan, who it is named after. The Soviet government claimed Nadellan died in a plane crash, and the event wasn't formally acknowledged until 1989. There is also the ethics of sending animals into space. Laika died early on her journey, but the true cause of death, overheating as a result of a malfunction, wouldn't be known until 2002. Citizens were instead told she was euthanized six days into the mission, but the scientists who sent her knew she wasn't coming back. 
Now, I have been trying to incorporate charity into this project, tomorrow's past. They always seem to end on a down note, uh, but I do believe that helping others is the way to a better future. Uh, seeing as how so many animals were used to test the possibility of the features featured in this video, I decided to give to the Toronto Humane Society. So many pets get mistreated, and places like this help care for neglected animals and connect them with caring families, so if you have the means, please consider donating to your local shelter. There is a huge archive of Technica Molodizi online in Russian uh, that I will link in the description for those interested. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and please consider supporting us on Patreon. Again, if you have the means, I know things are pretty terrible out there right now. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. See you in the future.